We are all being introduced. We, are, we, we call for this press conference to let you know what is really happening in the rise of sector of the economy. Uh, this is not the first time we do. I think some of us are familiar with us, but this time is necessary for us because what we are clamoring, the thing is still there. Uh, permit me to read from my, our written address. Then after that, we can entertain some questions, if there is need. Who we are? We are Rice Processors Association Nigeria, RIFAN, an association of investors in the integrated rice processing, formed as a direct response to the federal government of Nigeria call for private sector investment in the rice processing industry. Our members are presently very key players in the Nigerian economy, providing about 10,000 direct employment and millions of indirect jobs in the sub-sector. Various stakeholders in the rice value chain, indeed our investment in the rice sub-sector combined with the strategic rice program and initiatives of the federal government is the growth and development that we see today in the rice industry. Our products compete favorably in quality with any other rice from any region of the world. Introduction. The rice, rice, in Nigeria, rice in Nigeria is Nigeria's leading food stable, and over the last few years, consumption has been on the increase. Definitely, this is uh, because of the growth of the economy and urban, uh, rural, urban migration. So you have to, people have to align with what they can uh, feed themselves with. To ensure the availability of this food stable, guarantee food security, create jobs, and of, and, and of course, conserve the co uh, country for the reserve, the country administration of one inception, the current administration upon inception in 2015, embarked on several strategic programs and initiatives at, aimed at consolidating the subsector. In the last three years, you all know, when this administration come on board, they met AGRIC as one of their policy, focal point, and RICE is one of the focal point. They made so much investment in this regard, and many initiatives were put in place in order to achieve self-sufficiency in rice. All these have impacted greatly on our integrated rice processing capacity, which have increased from 800,000 metric ton in 2014 to 1.6 million metric ton in 2018. This is in addition to about 3.9 million tons of finished rice milled by thousands of cottage millers scattered across the country. These are the millers that you can see in all over the villages and towns by the roadside trying to uh, mill rice in a local way. They are doing their best and they are more in number, better, more in number than us because they cut across almost all the villages. I'm sure everybody can see them in Abakaleke, Kura, almost everywhere in the country. But all these things we mentioned above can just be eroded by a single act that is smuggling. In fact, that is why we are here today. Smuggling activities in Nigeria. Investors in Nigeria have made enormous financial commitment in the rice subsector. Unfortunately, the only threat to this industry total development is smuggling. Over 1 million metric ton of rice, about 20 million bags of 50 kg. Let me tell you in another way, about 34,000 trucks, 34,000 trucks of rice have been smuggled into this country in the last three months. <coughs> Just after Christmas to end of March, over a million tons of rice has been smuggled. And it's easy for you to verify that. Because whatever comes to Kotono Fort, parboiled rice, you know it's heading to Nigeria. Because Kotono doesn't eat parboiled rice, likewise Niger. So any parboiled rice that land in Benin Fort is coming to Nigeria. So you can check the record of Kotono 
report, you can google it and see the number of ships that arrive there in this uh, month we are talking about. Over a million ton has landed, which invariably means over a million ton has come into Nigeria. 20, 20 million bags, or you say 34,000 trucks of rice. Nigeria currently lost a huge revenue, foreign exchange and jobs to this balance. Of course, we are getting nothing. Uh, jobs have been lost. And uh, all our initiatives have been eroded by this act. Nigeria Rice Processing Company are shutting down because of their inability to get market access. We cannot compete with smuggled rice in terms of pricing. So most of our members are shutting down now. As I'm talking to you, more than half of the millers are not producing. Those who are still trying to produce are producing in minimal capacity just to keep the mill running. Most painfully, millions of uh, smallholders farmers are struck with their paddy because the millers can no longer afford to buy. You have to sell before you buy the raw material. If you are not selling, how are you going to buy the raw material? And our primary raw material, which constitutes 80% of our raw material need, is the price paddy. And if we are not selling the rice, how can we buy the paddy? And this party is produced by smallholder farmers scattered all over the, the, the country, in my village, in your village, everywhere. People are producing party. And the millers now are not buying. Our, we are afraid what will happen to this dry season party that is coming. In the next two weeks, harvesting of dry season party will commence in KB, in the, uh, Tarawa, and the rest. Jigawa, of course. Who is going to buy that bulk of body that is coming on board? The Rice Processors Association want to use this opportunity to tell everyone that if this menace is not tackled with appropriate dispatch, the magnitude of loss to Nigerian rice uh, stakeholders, starting with the federal government, because they are the biggest investors, this is what they are promoting for the last seven years. Integrated rice millers, fund, funding banks, CVN and rice farmers, and of course our workers and rice consumers, ETC, will be too devastating to cope with in the economy that is pillaging. There is need for urgent action to avert eventual national food emergency by combating smuggling, by combating smuggling so that we can continue to grow our local industry and economy. Investigation have shown all our inter international borders have been combated to smugglers' route, and all our markets are filled with smuggled foreign rice. This is, of course, something you can easily verify. You can go to the market. You can as well go to the borders. Musa was telling me about two weeks ago that he was in the border. He saw what is happening there. Our recommendation. As approved by Mr. President, we suggest immediate rate of the various rice markets across the country. We appeal to the federal government to begin to sanction officers and employees of agencies of government, e.g., Costa, NAPDAC, SON. Costa was saddled with the responsibility to <coughs> mind our borders. But unfortunately, unfortunately for us today, what we are seeing, this smuggling is happening with active connivance of the Nigerian customer. Because if there is no connivance, I assure you there is not going to be smuggling. But unfortunately, they are participating actively in this attitude. NAPDAC are not up to their responsibility because you go all, to, all, all through our market, you see rice without NAPDAC number. And I assure you, any rice miller, we have right, uh, NAPDAC numbers in our bags. So, 
are not even where, not, not, you cannot even find them anywhere. People are bringing in their goods freely, without any sun certification, nothing. And these are the three uh, institutions that we believe today they have the right to tackle this menace of smuggling. With the responsibility of uh, these are the certain with the who with the these three institutions were certain with the responsibility of enforcement who compromise their office or fail their various responsibility must commence. Government must note that some officers working in these government agencies are in collaboration with these smugglers. These officers must be fished out and punished by EFCC for economic sabotage. Government must deal firmly with smuggling and severely, severely punish infractions in the way that, market, that makes smuggling too costly to risk. Particularly, government must begin the, to fish out and punish multinational companies who play on both sides of the border, those who actually drive the syndicate. There are multinational companies operating in Nigeria legally, but they are also active smugglers because this rice is being imported by people to Benin. And these multinationals are the main smugglers, are the main importers to Benin. So we believe they are, they are doing their both side. They are here operating Nigeria legally and they are also in Benin importing rice. For Benin growth, they are doing something that is legal. But they know eventually this rice is coming to Nigeria. So this we feel is uh, something that government has to look at. You cannot be on both sides. If you want to be here, okay. Or you have to be there, then we know you are an enemy. It is absolutely vital for government to sustain the current drive for greater investment, strengthen the policy environment, and continue to implement policies and strategy that grows local capacity and protect local value chain. Government must, as a matter of urgent national importance, take strong diplomatic action with our neighboring countries who allowed Pavel rise into their country for their final destination, Nigeria. The government may consider closing the borders for some time if the overturned fails. We appeal to use this, we appeal to, to the state government to build relevant in, in agricultural infrastructure that permit more, more uh, that permit more than one season of farming such as irrigation facility, rural access road, and electricity. We cannot achieve self-sufficiency in rice with growing once. Maybe only in the wet season we grow rice, then you have to wait for another uh, season to grow rice. No country achieves self-sufficiency in rice with that. We have to do a minimum, a minimum of two crops. And for you to do that, you have to develop your irrigation facility, and create new ones so that people can have access to water that can make them to produce at least minimum twice. This is the standard all over the world. Countries that become so sufficiency in rice and even export, this is what they do. We have the capacity to do that. We have the dams, we have the waters, we have the ecology. There is nothing can stop us to achieve that. We have to have the political will to do that. That is the only thing. With regard to, to extension services, research and support, government should tra train and equip more extension officers and agents so that they can provide quality training to the farmers. Currently inadequate, well-trained extension, uh, extension agents, poor farmers training or practical guidance on good agricultural practice are undermining farming practice in Nigeria. Our research institutes are almost underfunded. Uh, in countries like India, they produce they produce at least ten varieties of seed, rice paddy seed, minimum of ten every year. But in Nigeria, we produce the last one that is the Paro 44 about ten years ago. One, 
So we can't compete with such uh, economy in terms of research and development of the sector. Government have to fund this area because without research, we cannot be we cannot meet up with other people who are investing a lot in researching new seed, new methods of farming, new technology in mechanization. Using funds from rice import levy and long term multinational agencies loan, the federal government can drive the rice production initiative to great success. Such funds can be effectively deployed and limited to areas of land clearing, development, irrigation, mechanization, and improve direct credit to farmers. This will reduce farmers' cost of production and invariably impact party cost and miller's output. Here, uh, government has to invest because we always say government, government, government. Because some of these investments are in, are in government, uh, uh, have to be done, bought by government. Government have the land, so we need to open up more party land so that more production can commence. In terms of mechanization, I can tell you today in Nigeria we don't have 3,000 3, tractors, working tractors, not tractors that you can find under the tree, dead. Working tractors, you cannot find 3,000. In one state in India, you can have almost 300,000 tractors, Punjab and we are competing with India in terms of rice production, in terms of soybeans, in terms of maize. There is no basis of comparison. You cannot achieve source efficiency or rice or any commodity with farming with coal and cutlass. It will not happen. We have to invest more in mechanization. We don't have up to 10 working combined harvesters. People have to harvest with their hand, cutting with cutlass, hitting on drums in order to bring out the party. While they can come with a combined harvester to do what you can do throughout the day in just 30 minutes. And today in this country we don't have up to 10 combined harvesters. We need a lot of investment in this regard. Likewise, issue of land clearing. Land clearing is very expensive. You cannot get the local farmers to say, clear this land and start farming. They don't have the capacity to do that. They don't have the financial models to do that. Government has to take some of this responsibility so that at least if the land is there, area is, is developed, we have youth, <coughs> thousands that are doing nothing. It makes it easy for them to start something. So government has to invest in these two areas. They are very key. Irrigation. If we don't even have access to the dams anyway. It's on solemnly by the federal government of Nigeria. Nobody owns any dam here. And the irrigation <coughs> facilities were dilapidated. In some areas, they are not even there. Government has to invest a lot in this regard. I cannot go and invest on something that is not mine. All these dams are owned by federal government of Nigeria. So government has to invest in it, putting in irrigation process, uh, equipment, facilities, so that people can use them and produce more food for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And eventually smuggle it into Nigeria. It becomes very cheap. We cannot compete with such type of rice. Lastly, issue of quality also comes about. If you go to Thailand, for example, or India, these are countries that have reserve, food reserve for five years, six years, seven years, as the case may be. So if you go to them, do you want to buy their food? If it is you, you it's, it's, it's a normal sense that first come, uh, first out. So they will go there to buy rice, they will send, tell you the one they stock in the last five years, or four years. Then they sell it out, then they produce another one and peel it back. So if you take all these three things, definitely we cannot compete with them in terms of uh, market share. These are the reasons that our people are going there to say, okay, we want to buy Thailand rice because of che it's cheaper, because they don't pay the duty, 
some in most cases the quality are not good but they don't know they just want to go and buy rice and feed their stomach this are uh, that is why we are talking of agency like navdag and so on to come in mm -hmm. so, um, not many neighbors as i'm saying yes of course uh for dealing with a neighbor being an african country we have this special relationship to deal with our neighbors. And we know, anyway, we are the largest country and we are the biggest. So these people are just our brothers, I can say, junior brothers. We have to deal with them with diplomacy. But I said, if diplomacy fail, then we can go ahead for the extreme uh, measure, that is to close the borders. We are doing something in that regard. Even last two weeks, I met with the Minister of Finance, we discussed this issue, and she promised to take it up with the President and eventually reach out to the President of Benin so that we can come together and discuss this issue of rice on the table. So all, if all this diplomatic effort fail, then we have no option than to call for the cloth. Yes, that is it. Today, it's about 3.5 hect per hectare, or even less. So if you compare these two, in the same hectare, this guy has six ton. In the same hectare, this guy get uh, three ton. Obviously, this guy in Thailand makes more money, and which would make his party a little bit uh, less costlier than this guy here. That is why we are calling on government to invest more to develop, develop uh, in the development of research, irrigation, and the rest. That we are calling for that just to make sure we reduce the cost of paddy. If we reduce the cost of paddy today, believe me, our rice will be cheaper than that of India and Thailand. Look at also infrastructure. Some of us here are running 24 hours on, on, on generator. And I believe you know the cost of diesel. 24 hours. Some of us pay almost half a million naira to take a truck of paddy from Kevi mm -hmm. to, to their place. Why is that your name, Ipo? Uh, or to take it to his place in Agbo, mm -hmm. Edo State. Edo State. Edo State. Edo State. Yeah. Almost half a million naira to take 30 tons of paddy. If you talk to the transporters, they will tell you bad road, uh, assess uh, this it's issue of check insecurity, point. checkpoint. The driver will tell you he will hold, he has to hold 100,000 for the checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Military checkpoint, police checkpoint, youth checkpoint, produce. old men checkpoint, produce, women, everything okay. is there. <laughs> so so it, is, it, is, it is just not possible for us for now. But with this investment coming on board, if con government continue to invest, if government continue to focus on rice, and invite more private sector to participate. Believe me, we are in the right in, we are in the right course. But if issue of smuggling will be tackled. Musa.